This podcast does not provide medical advice. Please listen to the complete disclosure at the end of the recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Everyone Dies, the podcast where we talk about serious illness, dying, death, and bereavement. I'm Marianne Matz. I'm a nurse practitioner, and I use my experience from working as a nurse for 44 years to help answer your questions about what happens at the end of life. And I'm Charlie Navarrete, an actor in New York City, and here to ask the questions that you may have while listening to our podcast. We are both here because we believe that the more you know, the better prepared you will be to make difficult decisions in a crisis. So please relax, get yourself something buttery and sinful to snack and sip on, and thank you for spending the next hour with Charlie and me as we talk about the secondary losses in grief. In the first half, we have a cultural trip to Germany that includes our recipe of the week. In the second half, we explore the secondary losses that come with the death of a loved one. And in our third half, Charlie hosts his own drag queen poetry hour. (laughs) Wait a minute. What? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see you in drag. Yeah, fat. Are you going to shave first? Shave what? <laughs> well, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> all of it. Why not shave all of it? Can't you see? You're no good with it on you. Moving you on. <laughs> I win. Yes. <laughs> but of course you do. We are traveling. That's why you, what? Yes. What? What? I said, that's why you hang around to see what's going to happen next. Yes. There we are. So listen, we are traveling this week what? to I'm listening. Germany. Germany. Yes. Deutschland. Have you been to Germany? Uh, kind of. Uh, to explore uh, funeral customs. As always, we are speaking about cultural generalities, which may or may not be observed at the next German funeral that you attend. When you think about Germany, you may think of beer, Brachwurst, and Oktoberfest, Mm -hmm. and that lovely brunette who took comfort in helping that young American who promised he did not sprechen die Deutsch, speak German, and took him under her wings, among other places, and carried him to new heights. Ah, ich, ich bin ein Berliner. <clears throat> you, have, you have a rich fantasy life, Charles. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, that's it. <laughs> Popular generalities about German culture depict it as strict, regulated, and efficient. While there is much diversity in Germany, it's a fair description of the way Germans traditionally handle death. German culture discourages getting too emotional about death. Germans traditionally see death realistically, according to its inevitability. They know they can't avoid death, so they take steps to pre-plan to make the process as structured and ceremonial as they can. Because religion has long played a major role in German culture, they also tend to avoid funeral or burial practices that might conflict with religious beliefs. A typical German funeral service isn't very different from one you might attend in the United States. Mourners gather to lay the dead to rest with songs and prayers. Differences of German customs typically don't allow open casket viewings or last goodbyes. It's also common to combine prayers and songs by reciting old prayers in the form of Gregorian chants. Requiem Eternum, Eternal Rest, is a prayer you might hear sung at a German funeral. Other common religious songs include Kyrie, and Angus Dei. Because Germany is a populous country, and because laws require burial of an urn or casket, most Germans don't actually purchase burial plots. Instead, they lease or rent them, usually for about 20 years. This gives the body time to fully decompose fully and ensure there's room for future burials. Germans commonly invite all those who attend the funeral to a reception and meal immediately after the burial. This serves two purposes. First, it helps people focus on more positive emotions after what may have been a draining experience. Second, it reminds mourners that life will go on and that they can keep their loved one's spirit alive by spending time with those whose lives they touched. Germans call this Lieschenschmaus, which roughly translates to funeral meal or corpse feast. 
Mourners usually wear formal clothing in dark colors. If you're mourning a close relative, black is worn, and many also wear sunglasses. The food served typically consists of popular German cuisine. This also includes Zuckerkuchen, a cake that Germans serve at weddings, christenings, and funerals. Zuckerkuchen, or sugar cake in English, belongs to both joy and sadness, to life and death. It suggests that we ought to start looking at the natural, healthy relationship between the two. Among Germans, Zuckerkuchen is often Freud und Leidkuchen, joy and sorrow cake, or Bierdekundkuchen, funeral cake, because of its dual nature. Zuckerkuchen is simple enough to make. First, you spread dough over a baking sheet, sprinkle it with a hefty amount of butter and sugar, knead it, then put it in the oven. It's no surprise that our recipe of the week is Oma's Butterkuchen, German butter cake recipe. It'll make a great contribution to your next funeral lunch. Or it could be your entire lunch. It sounds wonderful. Yes, it does. You know, you had me at butter. That's the butter. (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe I said that. Please go to our webpage for the recipe and pronunciation lessons, plus additional resources for this program. We hope you will be best friends with us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember to rate and review this podcast. We have a link in our show notes that makes rating our podcast easy. And that would be very helpful to us. As a licensed nonprofit organization, we are dependent on your kindness and always appreciate your tax deductible donations. If you find this podcast to be of help to you, please go to our webpage to donate so that we can continue to provide quality shows about serious illness, dying, death, and bereavement at www.everyonedies.org. That's every, the number one, dies.org. Marianne? You know, Charlie, more is lost than the person whom has died. So today I'm going to talk about what's called secondary losses in grief. The primary loss is the death of the significant other, the family, the friend, or the pet. Our primary grief is loss of the relationship with the deceased. But there are also secondary losses that arise as a result of the death. Now, secondary losses are the consequences of the death. They may occur during the loved one's dying, the death, or bereavement, and they can be ongoing. Sister Mary Agnes Samaritan, an OSB, wrote about levels of loss in a Hope Line newsletter from which this chat originates. Death forever changes the world of the bereaved. When an ending occurs, it demands new beginnings. Before that happens, a period of transition takes place. During this time, the bereaved closely examines what has been lost and what has been gained as a consequence of the ending. Like, what has actually changed? What continues to be the same? What's new? What experiences, roles, expectations, values, opportunities, fantasies do we have to give up as a result of the death? What new kind of roles and experiences must be assumed? Each secondary loss requires its own grief response. It's often difficult for the family and friends of an individual who has recently experienced the death of a loved one to understand why the grieving process lasts so long. Family and friends want to see their loved one be happy and get on with life. It's important for us to be aware of the many secondary losses that can accompany grief. This awareness may help the grieving person, as well as those who care about this individual, to be more patient and move more gently during grieving. So, what are the losses a person may experience after the death of a loved one? Now, Charlie, I've got a long list, so hang in there with me. Okay. Uh, First, okay, thanks, appreciate it. So, first is the loss of a large chunk of self the part of the self that was given to the other person to love and that at death seemed to be violently wrenched from our being. 
Second is a loss of identity, the roles of service used in the relationship, the feeling of wholeness that was lost when the person is no longer present and the role is no longer played. Three, loss of self-confidence. The failure to recognize one's own personal wholeness, leading to feelings of inadequacy, feeling like you're not able to do anything right. Four, the loss of a chosen lifestyle. Being forced to begin a new way of life, despite, despite one's personal wishes or choices, like being single again or being childless again. The loss of security, the uncertainty of not knowing what to expect, what will happen next, or how one will emotionally react or respond. The loss of feeling safe, this is the vulnerability of feeling exposed to the world of life all alone. The loss of a known family structure, that instant change in your family composition. The loss of a familiar way of relating to family and friends. The avoidance of family and friends stemming from their not knowing how to respond to the bereaved changed interests, as well as the sadness and anger that often are felt by the bereaved. The loss of the past. Despite the support and acceptance of new friends and acquaintances and their lack of the sense of the bereaved past journey of his or her history with the deceased, it's a loss that only you really know about. The loss of the future, the fear of thinking ahead, of imagining next year, or next month, or next week without the loved one. The fear that whatever future there is will be as painful as the present moment. A loss of direction, the sense that nothing seems to matter anymore and that there is no purpose in life. The loss of dreams, the disappearance of all those plans for spending the rest of my life with the person I love, of seeing my child grow up, or of having my parents as grandparents. A loss of trust, the insecurity that interferes with trusting oneself and making trusting anyone else nearly impossible. The loss of sharing with a loved one, having no one a best friend, a confidant, to listen to the little things and the big events of day-to-day -day living or to share in the grown-up years of a child. The loss of the ability to focus. This is the difficulty in focusing on what seems to be the non-essentials of the rest of life because one's entire being is so affected by the death. The loss of ability to see choices. The sense that the bereaved has no control at all over his or her life since the new lifestyle was not a choice. Loss of the ability to make decisions. The insecurity and lack of trust in oneself that leads to looking to others for direction and advice. That question of what should I do? Followed by confusion and indecision because everyone gives a different answer. A loss of a sense of humor. This is a failure to see anything as funny because one of the most important people in one's life is no longer around. The loss of health, the physical problems resulting from the emotional stress and strain of grief work, nausea, migraines, headaches, muscle knots, back problems, and everything else that goes with that. The loss of inner happiness and joy, the difficulty in recognizing happiness in one's own life coupled with the normal tendency to look outside oneself for a source of inner happiness. And lastly, the loss of patience with self, the desire to feel better now coupled with feelings of inadequacy and failure as the feelings of grief, grief feel as though you will never feel better. Secondary losses occur with any death, including the death of a pet. Secondary losses for pet death includes loss of routine, loss of identity, loss of related social connectedness, like with other pet carers and with vets, loss of companionship, loss of familiar exercise. All secondary losses should be viewed as a part of the grieving process, and some secondary losses may not show up for extended period of times. For example, that first time that you go to emergency room or to a hospital and they say, oh, we have Shirley down as your emergency contact person. Is that still correct? And you have to say, no, that's not still correct, and change who your emergency contact person is. The griever and the loss 
of who love them may not even be aware of the secondary losses. As you become aware of them, do not try to address them all at once. Take them one at a time. It's very important to note that some individuals may experience additional losses that aren't on this list, and some of the losses listed might not be experienced by everyone who is grieving. This list is presented to help all of us, grievers, friends, relatives, helpers, understand why nothing can replace the grieving process. The period of time it takes for the wound of loss to become a scar and for the darkness of grief to become the light of life. Charlie, uh, any questions about that or can you relate to that? Yes, I remember when um, I brought it up before. Uh, after Michael died, um, you know, as a you know, gathering, you know, relatives and and uh, and friends came over, and Michael's dog Brando was just out of control. I just you know, just really barking a lot, you know, um, nipping at people. Um, and I remember we you know we had Lucy uh, Morgenstern on. Uh, while ago who you know specializes you know with grievance but with with pets with animals and i remember what she had said and i just you know finally picked up brando and uh there's a courtyard back there i just sat down with him and just started telling him you know michael's not here anymore and uh just like whispered that in his ear and just held him he struggled and then calm down. And it was just that, just what you're talking about, you know, that secondary loss. Um, Brandon was just annoying the shit out of everyone. But, <laughs> I mean, he knew. He, he mm -hmm. knew something was just terribly wrong. Um, so that, I, I always think of that with uh, secondary loss. But then also what you were saying, it's not just, well, what you just said about, uh, you know, on your, uh, you know, healthcare proxy, and I really hope everyone out there has a healthcare proxy. Um, you, you know, you're asked, okay, is so and so still uh, your emergency contact person? And no, that person is not. Um, so that, that yeah. it's just it's just different things that uh, you just are not consciously aware of, uh, but they hit you. Mm -hmm. They hit you, and you just don't know where this is coming from. And a lot of times we're not told about that oh, there are these things right. called secondary losses. Yep. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, yeah. And you don't, you know, you feel horrible, but you're not sure, like, what is this all yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. Why, why am I feeling so bad? I, you know, this isn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And even for, um, like last week when I, I, Juliana stopped by to drop off her dog and, and I just, you know, like I, I would with any of my friends say, oh, my God, she just turned 25 last week. Do you believe that? I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Jeez. And that, but, but the other side of that, Charlie, was as soon as it was out of my mouth, it was like, oh, Michael won't be turning 25 because they were the same age. Right. Yeah. You know? And then and you had said, yeah, there's, seems like there's a lot of, kids that you're seeing that are turning 25 right but and then, yeah exactly Michael, yeah. but michael's not yeah you know? um and just and, and again i was not conscious of of you know one of my because i also you know teach english as a second language that one one of my students um her daughter is 25 and it, when when we were you know talking about this uh, when we recorded this last you know in, in that episode it suddenly hit me. I thought, oh, my God, her daughter's 25, too. And, yeah, exactly. Her, her, you know, her daughter travels. She just, she just came back from, uh, she had just come back from Thailand. Um, and then, yeah, I thought that, too. You know, Michael will never visit Thailand. Because, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, he had, traveling was one of the things he was starting to get into, and he wanted to travel, like, in different parts of the world. Uh, but, yeah, just that. It was very unconscious, and then it just suddenly struck me, wait, this kid is also 25. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
and it hits you right between the eyes when you're yeah, not really expecting it. Yeah. And so, and so it's like, it affects, it's a secondary loss for you. It's a secondary loss for your friends because afterwards I was like, shoot, I shouldn't have said anything about Juliana, but. No, but you have, I mean, of yeah, exactly. I mean, she's, life, life, she's life goes kid, on. Yeah. She's your, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, life goes on. You can't, you know, it is what it is. K sera sera. Yeah, but still, it's it's those those I was you know I would say grief is that gift that keeps on giving. It's like just 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 when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, you know, it's like there's the shark. Right. <laughs> and so it feels like it's never going to be safe to go back in the water. Yeah, it start it, it starts. Probably isn't. Yeah, I mean it's it. Uh, and I said before about just you know when you when, when you feel that that grief, just let it, just feel it. Don't don't fight it. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it's now your your new companion. It'll always be there, but in time, you know, it, it diminishes. It, it won't go away, but it you know it, it diminishes. Well, it becomes, I guess, more tolerable until something happens that you say, like, I mean, I, I don't want to keep return, referring to my dog like it's. A child, but you know, when Dimple died yesterday, I was in the grocery store uh -huh. and I went by the bag of the little mini donuts, you know. And I used to always get the min little mini donuts, and Dimple and I would share the bag. <laughs> 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 I'd put I put her I put her pills in the um, the uh, the powder sugar donuts, and she loved them. Mm. And I saw them, and I got all misty eyed in the grocery yeah, store because yeah. I. Because I'm not buying powdered sugar donuts for Dimple and me anymore. Yeah. You know? Yep. It's like, it's like, Jesus, you know? There, a secondary loss, powdered sugar donuts. There you are. Yes. But I know I could buy them just for me, but I'm not going to. It's like, that was our thing. So there. There. <laughs> powdered sugar donut, take that. <laughs> So what do you have for our third half, Charles? Your your um your drag queen poetry hour. Oh yes, that's uh what a drag. Do you have to go do you have to go get your makeup on or No, I would just come as I am. <laughs> well, for our third half, I have a pone. I have a pone. I have a pone and I have a poem. Uh, yes, <laughs> a poem by um, Mario Andretti. Oh, the race car driver, right? Uh, oh. I didn't know he was a poet. I I did not know this either. Um, or is this Mario Andretti, the Brazilian poet? I'm going to go with the Brazilian poet. And this poem is titled "The Valuable Time of Maturity." I counted my years and discovered that I have less time to live going forward than I have lived until now. I have more past than future. I feel like the boy who received a bowl of candies, the first ones he ate ungracious. But when he realized there were only a few left, he began to taste them deeply. I do not have time to deal with mediocrity. I do not want to be in meetings where inflamed egos parade I am bothered by the envious who seek to discredit the most able, to usurp their places, coveting their seats, talent, achievements, and luck. I do not have time for endless conversations, useless to discuss about the lives of others who are not part of mine. I do not have time to manage sensitivities of people who, despite their chronological age, are immature. I cannot stand the result that generates from those struggling for power, People do not discuss content, only the labels. My time has become scarce to discuss labels. I want the essence. My soul is in a hurry. Not many candies left in the bowl. I want to live close to human people, very human, who laugh of their own stumbles and get away from those turned smug and overconfident with their triumphs, away from those filled with self-importance who do not run away from their responsibilities, who defends human dignity. 
and who only want to walk on the side of truth and honesty. The essential is what makes life worthwhile. I want to surround myself with people who know how to touch the hearts of people, people to whom the hard knocks of life taught them to grow with softness in their soul. Yes, I am in a hurry to live with intensity that only maturity can bring. I intend not to waste any part of the goodies I have left. I'm sure they will be more exquisite than most of which I've eaten so far. My goal is to arrive to the end satisfied and in peace with my loved ones and my conscience. I hope that your goal is the same, because either way, you will get there too. Hmm. That's nice. Now, he lived mm -hmm. between, he was born in 1893 right. and died in 1945. 45, yeah. And it's as relatable as if it was written. Oh, yeah, this is nothing new. I mean, you, you, you go back no. to, to reading, you know, the ancient Greeks or Shakespeare. This is a common reoccurrence. This is nothing new. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And you look great in drag. I love it. Thank you very much. So... Please stay tuned for the continuing saga of Everyone Dies, and thank you for listening. Like an hourglass made of sand, so are the glasses you drink out of. And from Benjamin Drank, and from Benjamin Franklin, who not only drank out of glasses, but wore them too, in wine, there is wisdom. In beer, there is freedom. In water, there is bacteria. This is Charlie Navarrete. <laughs> I'm Marianne Matzo, and we'll see you next week. Remember, we have two lives, and the second begins when you realize that you only have one. And every day is a gift. This podcast does not provide medical advice. All discussion on this podcast, such as treatments, dosages, outcomes, charts, patient profiles, advice, messages, and any other discussion, are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment. Always seek the advice of your primary care practitioner or other qualified health providers with any questions that you may have regarding your health. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard from this podcast. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately. Everyone Dies does not recommend or endorse any specific tests, practitioners, products, procedures, opinions, or other information that may be mentioned in this podcast. Reliance on any information provided in this podcast by persons appearing on this podcast at the invitation of Everyone Dies or by other members is solely at your own risk.